Alright everyone, so I put a poll on Patreon where people could vote on what species I was going to show in Drawer of the Week and all of you voted on this species, the Morning Cloak. What's up everyone, this is uh, your host Bart Coppens and today I'm going to tell you about uh, one of my favorite butterflies from Europe, Nymphalis antiopa, the uh, Camberwell beauty. So. Uh, I'm in a museum today and behind me I have a drawer of them and I hope to educate you about uh, what about this beautiful species. I have to apologize for my apparent lack of enthusiasm here. Usually I open these kind of videos with a smile but today I'm feeling a little bit sick and depressed honestly. Um, if you're worried why? Please don't worry about me. My life is fine. I'm okay. I don't have a reason to feel sad, but I still do. I don't know why. I guess I'm just a human after all, huh? Who would have thought? So uh, anyway, this video is not about me. It's about the Camerwell beauty. And what's to cheer you up in life? Then to look at your favorite butterfly, right? So let's get this video started. Hey everyone, and thanks for watching. Nymphalis antiopa is a butterfly species with an interesting common name, the morning cloak. Perhaps a grim sounding name that refers to the white border around the dark wings of this butterfly. A dark cloak worn by a mourner at a funeral. In the United Kingdom it is also called the Camberwell Beauty because it was first recorded in Camberwell in 1748. Uh, and it was named after this locality. This butterfly is widely distributed over the northern hemisphere from North America to Europe to Russia and the temperate parts of Asia. They typically prefer colder mountainous areas over hot and tropical areas. And in the vast parts of their range the species appears to be absent in the hottest localities. It is also the state insect of Montana. In the wild, this butterfly lives in hardwood forests. It seems to prefer open areas within forests, such as very broad forest roads that really receive plenty of sunlight, sunny forest meadows or the forest edges. Here they can often be seen patrolling the edge of the forest, practically hugging it as they fly along the edge, sometimes coming down to the ground level to bask in the sunlight and absorb heat. Interestingly, but the, the butterfly is quite polyphagous and will deposit eggs on a variety of forest plants. The species is very fond of willows and is known to deposit eggs on over 10 different species of willow, which are usually of the broadleaf kind, such as Salix nigra, Salix cinerea, Salix pentandra, Salix caprea, Salix aurita, Salix filicifolia and more. Next to that they are known to use elms, such as the American elm, Ulmus americana, and some types of poplar tree, or to Americans that's cottonwood, from the genus Populus. Several species of birch, genus Betula, and much more rarely plants from the cherry family, such as roses, rosa, hawthorn, crateges, cherry, prunus, and others. They have also been recorded on hackberry, celtis. However, it is important to note that willow, salix, is by far their favorite host plant. In the majority of cases, the adults will seek out willows to lay eggs on. While they can also uh, use the other plants I just mentioned as host plant, it rarely ever happens in the wild. Perhaps the caterpillars have a lower survival rate on plants that are not willow, since willow is their optimal food plant, and they pr prefer to use it whenever they can. 
The morning cloak has interesting feeding habits. While they have been observed nectaring from flowers, they seem to prefer alternative food sources much more. These include the sugary tree sap from damaged bleeding trees, or the juices from fallen and ripe fruits, and the sugary mildew that aphids produce. In that sense, its feeding habits are similar to those of many forest butterflies such as purple emperors or morpho butterflies, mostly ignoring flowers in favor of a fructiforous diet. Male morning cloaks are quite territorial and will often seek out a desirable area in the forest and will fiercely defend it from competing males. When a female enters, he will try to court her. The males that are defending a prime territory that females want to visit have the highest chances of mating and thus, among the males there is a lot of competition when it comes to capturing the best spots in the forest. A male can mate several times and males that have uh, that own good territory that attracts females reproduce many times more than other males. Males to him seem to have an affinity for perching. Perching means sitting on top of a high object and looking out over an area. Typically, males seek a high position to look out over their territory so that they are alert to any intruding rival males or potential partner females that enter his territory. Male morning cloaks are also quite bold and aggressive and will not only attack rival males, but in some cases also bigger predators such as bird and dragonflies. Despite being quite a harmless creature, aggressively flying towards and bumping against their enemies may confuse them and scare them away, even if it is a bird many times their own size. The caterpillars of the morning cloak develop to adults in just a few weeks and live communally. Here's a fun fact. The caterpillars of the morning cloaks also have urticating spines that if when they make contact with your skin, they can actually hurt and inject a bit of venom. This is unusual for a butterfly. Generally butterflies only live for a few weeks, but adult morning cloaks are one of the longest living butterflies ever uh, recorded with lifespans up to 11 months. What is really interesting is the fact that these butterflies overwinter as adults. Another interesting fact is that morning cloaks in Europe only have one generation per year. The life cycle is as follows. In spring and summer the butterflies reproduce and lay eggs on their respective host plants. In a few weeks time the caterpillars develop into adults. And this is where it gets interesting. Since the butterfly only has one generation a year it means that these butterflies will not reproduce uh, anymore the same year. Instead, they spend all summer building up fat, reserve, fat reserves by eating a lot and preparing to hibernate. It is interesting to note that the morning cloaks overwinter as imagos, that means as adult butterflies, and not as pupa or eggs. In fact, they have an anti-freeze agent in their body fluid that prevents the butterflies from freezing during winter, called glycerol. Being cold-blooded is an advantage when it comes to hibernation since cold-blooded animals need external warmth to run their metabolism. That means that when temperatures drop, the metabolism slows down and the insects stop spending energy on homeostasis. To put it simply, insects don't use energy when they are cold. Generally, butterflies only live for a few weeks. But adult morning cloaks are one of the longest living butterflies with lifespans up to 11 months. What is really interesting is the fact that these butterflies overwinter as adults. Another interesting fact is that the morning cloaks in, cloaks in Europe only have one generation per year. The life cycle is as follows. In spring and summer the butterflies reproduce and lay eggs on their respective host plant. In a few weeks time, the caterpillars develop into adults. And this is where it gets interesting. Since the butterfly only has one generation per year, this means that the butterflies won't reproduce anymore the same year. Instead, they spend all summer building up fat reserves by eating a lot and preparing to hibernate. It's interesting to note that morning cloaks overwinter as imagos, that means as adult butterflies, not as pupa or eggs. In fact, they have an anti-freeze agent in their body fluid that prevents the butterflies from freezing during winter. And it's called glycerol. Being cold-blooded is an advantage when it comes to hibernation. 
since cold-blooded animals need external warmth to run their metabolism. That means that when temperatures drop, the metabolism slows down and the insect stops spending energy on homeostasis. To put it simply, insects don't use energy when they are cold. This allows the butterfly to hibernate for many months without requiring any food at all. Before winter, the butterflies also build up a fat reserve in their abdomen by eating a lot. It's only the consecutive spring that the butterflies spring into action when temperatures gradually rise. When they are warmed up, the butterfly's metabolism recovers quickly and only after hibernating they reproduce. It is the cold that they rely on. It enables them to remain dormant without using any energy. The warmer the winter, the more energy the butterflies spend and the more difficult it becomes for them to survive until spring. Another interesting fun fact is that this does not happen in America. The American morning cloaks produce multiple generations per year and are continuously brooded in captivity. Isn't that interesting? Perhaps the climate there is more suitable for them, which allows them to hibernate situationally. It also indicates how genetically distinct they are from European morning cloaks. Because the butterflies overwinter as adults, cold and dry winters are really important for them. This species is restricted to the countries in Europe where the winters are a little bit colder and drier. It cannot successfully hibernate in a warmer and wetter winter. Because of this, the species because of this, this species is one of the butterflies that is declining because of climate change. While some species benefit from increasing temperatures, the morning cloak is one of the species that suffers, since it ruins their hibernation. Warm butterflies use more energy. Thank you for watching my video, it means a lot to me. Consider supporting my channel on Patreon, so that I can spread more education and awareness about insects. At the time they are declining, this is important, and besides, my channel is sadly demonetized. Someday, when this YouTube channel is a lot bigger than it is right now, which I am sure will happen if I keep going, then I hope to make a documentary of this species in the wild. However, in my country it is unfortunately exceedingly rare. It is a native species to the Netherlands. I live in the Netherlands. And in Dutch we call it a rauwmantel. That basically translates to morning cloak. And in fact, morning cloak is also one of the common names in English, next to the Camperwell beauty, of course. So um, it is found in the Netherlands, but so extremely rare that I'm not possible to make a documentary uh, of it, that it's not possible for me to make a documentary of it. Anyways, thanks for watching. Sorry for that sorry ass introduction. I don't know what happened, man. I'm completely fine, okay guys? My life Perfecto is going well, my studies are going well, my biology jobs are going well, my YouTube channel is going well, my breeding is going well. But humans don't always need a reason to feel bad, because humans are erratic, unpredictable. That's what makes us human. And for some reason I just have a really depressing day. But I hope you did enjoy this video regardless, and oh boy, I need a haircut. See you next time. Hello everyone and thank you for watching this week's episode of Drawer of the Week. My name is Bart Coppens and I work with butterflies and moths. Both dead ones and live ones. Because I breed them in captivity. I study them, I film them, I photograph them, I research them. And I volunteer in a museum collection where I'm a conservator of the butterflies and moths. Now, Drawer of the Week is my weekly series where I show you one drawer with interesting specimens from a museum and give you some interesting facts about them. If you like it, like my video, subscribe to my channel and consider joining my crowdfunding platform, Patreon. Because only with your help, my mission to educate the whole world about insects can be fulfilled. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you next episode of this weekly series. Perfect, yeah. Hello everyone and thank you for watching my Drawer of the Week mini-series. I would like to take a moment to say thanks 
to the Natural History Museum of Rotterdam. Or in Dutch, Het Natuurhistorisch Museum van Rotterdam. All the insect videos I film, I film in the scientific collection of the Rotterdam Natural History Museum, where I work as a honorary junior conservator. Thanks for watching and till next time.